apologies for the delay. Okay, so what I would like to speak about with you all uh, this, after, this afternoon for you too now, one minute past afternoon, um, is uh, the title I believe is um, COVID Rosh Hashanah, what is important? And what I mean by that uh, title is not, you know, what is important necessarily about Rosh Hashanah, though, of course, we're going to, you know, we're going to look at that. But <clears throat> what I'd like to do with you more is to, to recognize some basic underpinnings of Rosh Hashanah that um, for those of you who have studied with me, we've spoken about for so many, so many times over the years. Those who might not have had, you know, um, experience with the way that I've treated Rosh Hashanah, that we've approached Rosh Hashanah, I will simply say this, that the Rosh Hashanah is said, is spoken about over and over again as in our tefillot, as the Yom Zikaron, or Yom HaZikaron, which means literally that is a day of memory. And what that means is, um, what it means is that we are spending this day reflecting and recalling in memory the nature of our lives. And, um, and we do that in recognizing and understanding the fact that in my memory lies my identity, that I do not have an identity without my memory. All of my experiences, the things that I've learned, the people that I've met, the things that I don't even realize necessarily have come into me are all stored in my memory. And it is woven together for me and emerges as my identity, who I am. Without memory, we have no identity. And we look at that identity and we call it on Rosh Hashanah because we recognize, as we say over and over again in our tefillot, Hayom Harat Olam, today the world is conceived. And that means that on the anniversary of conception, Kadosh Baruch Hu, God, looks at his creation and looks at its development and assesses how it is faring in its development, in its unfolding. And a judgment is made. A judgment is made that allows for meaning. It provides meaning. It gives meaning to our lives, to the world, to the interrelationships between the two. And the beauty of Rosh Hashanah for the Jewish people is, if it is the case that everybody is looking at, uh, everybody's being judged, Milo, as we say in the Tefillah, Milo Nifkad Kayom Haseh, who's not taken account of on this day in front of God? It means if that is if that is so, and we accept and believe indeed that it is so, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu looks at the entire world on this day, judges the entire world and all of its inhabitants on this day, the grace of this day, the beauty of the day, the chesed of the day is that we, Israel, we the Jewish people, are invited by the judge, by Kadosh Baruch Hu, to participate. No one else is invited to participate. Everybody else bears the judgment, but nobody else is asked, and what do you think? And what do you say about your life? And Kadosh Baruch Hu, in his great mercy and in his great uh, Chesed and kindness takes what we say into consideration on that day in his judgment. And that's why we call it a day that is concealed. Ben kese le'asor. Kese means it's covered up. The moon is covered up on that day, but we also recognize Rosh Hashanah is covered up on that day. There's very, very little at all said about Rosh Hashanah in the Torah. It's our mesorah. It's given to us that it is a day of judgment. And I've given shiurim before. They're all available on why the day of Zikaron becomes the day of judgment and so on and so forth. But today we will accept that, that is the, the, um, the postulate that upon which we're working. That HaKadosh Baruch Hu judges and invites us, his partners in creation, in the breed that we have with him, to speak and share what we think about our lives, what we want. And so we will say to him collectively as a nation, Zuchreinu Lahaim, what do we want? We want to be recalled for life. It may not look like it, given the year that we've lived. It may not look like it, given the life that we've lived. But if you ask me today what it is that I want, that is what I want. And we come to Rosh Hashanah with that. And so Rosh Hashanah is also a day in which we have to assess our lives, because HaKadosh Baruch is going to be asking us, what say you on this day of judgment? What do you wish for yourself on this day? Tell me, because I'm making the judgment, and I will take it into consideration. It will mean... A great deal for me, as Kaviachol, so to speak, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, for you to share with me. How do you see your life? Do you 
wish to live a full life being everything that I, I dreamed for you to be, all that I created you to be. Tell me. And so we have to prepare for this day because we have to be prepared to answer that question. And we don't want to answer that question shooting from the hip, as it were. We want to answer that question with conviction, with sincerity, with truth. And so my question for us this year, and so my entire uh, presentation this year, in this particular uh, uh, setting, is given what we've been through over the last six months, all of us, in different ways, but pretty similar. I mean, I have to say, I did, I did, it was very, remar it was very interesting to me. It was remarkable to me. I did travel for just a few days in the middle of this insanity in the beginning of June to New York from London. And it was like I, everybody was doing the same thing that was happening in London. Everybody was walking out with masks. Everybody was concerned about the same, you know, in, you know, social distancing. I mean, that was in June. Things have changed <laughs> since then. But uh, it was the entire world. And it was interesting to see at that point that I could go to a different city and see exactly the same response as was happening where I lived. So I want to ask the question, and, and I'm, I'm sharing this with everyone who's listening today as a personal thing. I mean, I've given many, many classes over the last 25 years on Rosh Hashanah. I'm grateful that I've had the opportunity to share that with all of you and those who are not here. <laughs> those who are here and those who are not. And so I'm going to base our basic underpinnings and understandings of Rosh Hashanah on those previous learnings and ask this question. If we are going to come to Rosh Hashanah with informed responses before HaKadosh Baruch Hu, for ourselves and for Him, because we also have to answer the question, don't we? We have to answer, what say you to yourself about your own life? We rarely ask ourselves those questions. We just live. We don't ask, what does my life mean to me? What is my life in terms of my experience? Is it going the way that I want it to go? Is it going in the way that I would hope it would end? Have I thought about the fact that my life is being crafted as I live each day? I mean, one thing that none of us can get out of, whether we agree with the philosophy, don't agree with the philosophy, have questions about them, one thing none of us can disagree with is that we are crafting a life. As, as long as we are alive. And that when we die on Ma'abi Yisrim Shana, it will be over and the life will be created and it will be done. We can live that life and create it consciously or we can live that life and create it unconsciously. We can live that life and create it subconsciously, quasi-conscious and quasi-not, which is what most of us do. So coming to Rosh Hashanah, we have to answer the question and we have to answer the question that HaKadosh Baruch Hu asks to us, which is essentially the same question. And that is, what say you about your life? Does it matter to you? And if so, in what way? And we have to do that in an informed way. And so the question is, what does COVID help us with? And I wanted to think about what is it that I think we all can share in the experience, because everybody's had different experiences with it. I mean, everybody was isolated differently. You got stuck with who you got stuck with <laughs> differently. If it was anyone, some people were stuck alone. But what is the, the one aspect that I believe all of us on one level or another, I believe all of us on one level or another can relate to, and that is being alone. Isolating. Even if you isolated with your whole family, all your kids, it still was a, an element of solitude. You did not go about your regular social life. It was heavily truncated. And in most of such situations, what that creates is for elements that otherwise are buried or distracted or not looked at because we have a great deal of social interaction that's going on that allows for us to distract from things. It allows for things that are otherwise pushed down and, and left on the sides to come in and come up. And I would be willing to bet that if you are being entirely honest, that there have been things over the last six months that you have come to an awareness of in terms of yourself and your own life, 
that you were not consciously aware of prior. And we will have responded to that in any number of ways. We will have responded to that in surprise, in wonder, in discomfort, in anger, in fear. And we will have responded to it in any number of different ways. We will have chosen to look at it, to process it, to share it. Some of us will have chosen to try and push it down again. Some of us will have been deeply hurt by it. Some of us might have been depressed by it. Some of us might have been extremely fearful of it. But all of us have experienced solitude and all of us have experienced the emergence of self that otherwise does not emerge in that solitude. And all of us have had to deal with it in one way or another. And so my question is, what are we going to do with that? What are we going to do with the experience of solitude in whatever way it came to us over the last six months? And how are we going to bring that into Rosh Hashanah? Now, before we go into answering that question, I want to support the fact that I am identifying solitude as a valuable element of our own growth and relationship with God. It isn't just a fluke. We have a tradition in Torah for such things. The first place that we have that tradition, which is not always explicitly expressed, but nonetheless a major part of Torah, is that the great ones among us, our great ones in the past, found themselves alone before their greatness. So whether it was Yosef at Sadiq, for example, stuck in jail or in a pit, or isolated from the rest of his family and however it was that he was, he was alone for all intents and purposes. That young man, 17 years old, he was alone in Egypt. Moshe, Jacob, Abraham, how long have those men stood with nothing but sheep in a wilderness? And things start to come up when you're in that place. Imagine being Moshe Rabbeinu, once a prince of Egypt, exiled into the desert, watching sheep all day by himself. You start to think about your life. You can't help but question the last 80 years of your life and what they meant, and what they were about, and who you became, and what they did to you. You think that uh, he would be ready to talk to Kadosh Baruch Hu if it were not that he had to go through those things? That Yaakov Abinu is, we see him, the, 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 the image, the, the, the scene of him alone in a field, by himself, before he meets, excuse me, Yitzhak Abinu, before he meets Rufka. All of them. Solitude was an important part of their life. And Harambam writes that every Navi, every prophet, incorporated solitude into his life, or her life for that matter. And we have female prophets. Look. Moria Nebuchim. Harambam writes, this is a different point of the Moria. But Rambam writes in the Moria that every prophet, this I'm going to show you something else, but every prophet had times of bididut, of solitude, in order for them to be able to commune with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to, dis, to cease the distractions, to quiet the noise, to allow for the elements that were otherwise buried to come up for them, for them to process. And then Harambam talks in the Moray Nebuchim about how it is that you serve God and how it is that you have intent when you pray. He says, yes, I know, you pray. Well, you speak your words and think about other things. You stand by the wall and shake and you say the words and your mind is on other things. Train your mind, he says, to say the Shema and have an awareness of every word of the Shema and what it means, not just the Pasuk, Pasuk Rishon, not just the first Pasuk, says Rambam. And do this for many, many, many days, he says, until it becomes, become used to it. Same with the Tefillah, he says. He goes on and he says, I'm, he gives the nature of a person's day. And then he says here, 
on the page. אבל בעת בדידותך לבדך בלי אף אחד, when you are alone, in solitude, without anyone, ובעת התעוררך על מיטתך, and at the time that you are on your bed, at night, in the silence, by yourself, היזהר וישמר מלהפנות המחשבה באותם העיתים היקרים בשום דבר אחר. He said, beware, do not, so I need everybody to mute, please. Beware, do not allow your mind to think about frivolous things and distractions during that time. Those times are precious that you find yourself alone. Don't let yourself think on anything else. Prat leota avoda sikhlit. Other than... your dedication and service of your life to your mind and consciousness. That is what connects you to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. V'hi ha'itkarvut l'fnei Hashem. That awareness and consciousness is your connection to God. Your awareness of self, your awareness of your reality, your awareness of truth, that is what connects you to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Don't squander those precious times, says HaRambam. It's your presence before him. It's an opportunity to be present before him in those times. As I explained to you. Not in your imagination of all kinds of things that one might think about in one's mind. Solitude. Our precious moments. Mesilat Yisharim. הפרישות במנהגים הוא התבודדות. Separating oneself from the regular runs of life in society is achieved in solitude. וההבדל מן החברה, keeping away from people. המדינית, you know, the average social interactions. לפנות ליבו אל העבודה וההתבוננות בה כראוי. To clear your heart, you could be lefanot and lefnot, right? To clear your heart and turn your heart. Towards the hidbonenut, conscious awareness. Just not too much. Don't become a recluse. Don't become a hermit. But one should set for oneself times for aloneness. being with oneself. And he says, you be careful not to do it too much, but ultimately it's something that a person should do. He says here where you have to be careful not to do it too much. But be careful with who it is that you are. Find yourself a time of solitude to cling to your God. and to find the paths of straightness and righteousness, and true service. Of course, who can talk about Hidbodedut without referencing Rav Nachman and Breslov, which he's famous for. Everybody knows that the Breslov Hasidim are dedicated to Hidbodedut. This is what he says, one of the things he says about it. Hidbodedut ma'ala al-yona gdula minakol. The ability to be in solitude is one of the highest levels of all. דהיינו, what that means is, לקבוע לו על כל פנים, that you set for yourself in whatever way, שעה, an hour, או יותר, להתבודד לבדו, to isolate, to be alone. באיזה חדר, in any room, or if you have to go out to the field and do it there, ולפרש שיחתו בינו לבין קונו, and to speak between yourself and God. בטענות ואמתלאות, בדברי חן וריצוי ופיוס. You speak to God in whatever way it is that you need to speak to God. But you ask for him grace and mercy. הוא יתחנן מלפניו. שיקרבו אליו. Beg him to bring you close. לעבודתו באמת. To his service. How הקדוש ברוך הוא does that? It may hurt. הקדוש ברוך הוא אומר, I'll bring you close. It's not going to be comfortable. וסביביו נסערה מאוד. Being close to God is quite stormy. 
בשאלה, שני לוחות הברית, ויצחק הורוויץ, very influential on the חסידות that came later. גם כמה חיבורים הראשונים נמצא שההתבודדות והפרישות והדבקות היו נוהגים בה חסידי ישראל, we see very much evidence that isolation was an aspect of people's building of their life and their, their own, their self. היינו שביותם לבדם מפרישים את דעתם ענייני העולם, at these moments, in these particular specified times, they pulled away from the world. You can read it all, I'm not going through it. So isn't that not something that occurred to all of us, whether we wanted to or not, in the last six months? What have we taken from it? Has it just scared us? Have we just wanted to get out of it no matter what? Maybe. But there's no Ra without some element of Tov in it. I mean, there must have been some good in that. Something that you learned that you didn't know before. The tragedy of this entire isolation and lockdown would be that we are the same people that we were going into it as we are coming out of it. We shouldn't be. So I simply ask the question that, to you that I ask myself, I am asking myself and I am thinking on myself. What have I learned in isolation? And I tell you, I, it wasn't an easy run. And it wasn't something that I want to pretend didn't happen. I don't want to be the person I was coming into it as the person I am, the same person I am coming out of it. I want that to be something, an opportunity for my growth. And I have to sit and think, what have I learned about myself during that time that I was not interacting, that I was not engaging in my regular social involvements? I haven't spoken to a, a live audience of people for five months. You know what that is for me? It's a mainstay of my life. I'm sure all of us have had the regular things that we were used to that were no longer there. And we find ourselves alone on whatever level we find ourselves. And what does that do to us? From the dawn of time, that was something that, that the great one saw as very important in humanity, certainly in terms of our relationship with God, our relationship to ourselves and our own growth. And so the question is, what has it done for us? And the truth of the matter is, you say, well, what does it have to do with Rosh Hashanah, Rabbi? Well, first of all, it has to do with Rosh Hashanah simply because Rosh Hashanah is about introspection and self-assessment. And we have just gone through a pre-period of Rosh Hashanah, a pre-six-month period from Pesach to Rosh Hashanah, essentially, of profound uh, self-awareness and experience, or at least opportunities for it. It has everything to do with Rosh Hashanah. And that's why I, I included Rabbi Uda Levi in the sources. where he says to us, Think, contemplate, set your mind on your own secret. Who are you? Hibatta, look at, Mata, umeayne sodecha. What are you? Where does your, your foundations come from? You're going to tell me, are you going to tell me that the last six months of solitude have not brought out those elements of experience to you in any way? What was my childhood? What was my experiences of life? What are my, what are my behaviors and my habits that are, that when I isolate them or I take them away, these things come out in me? You're telling me that that hasn't been an experience in your life? Who set you up? Who pushed you into that solitude? I don't know the answers as to why all of this is happening. I am not so presumptuous. But I also do not believe that it isn't God that told all of us, okay, time out, get home. Everybody off the streets. We're calming the world down for a few months. No, I, I, I don't believe that that's fluke. All I can take from that is what it is that it did to me. 
no idea what it is about in terms of the world, and I would never be so presumptuous to say. All I can say is what it is that I've, I've experienced. What has it done to me? And that's all that Rabbi Uda Levi is asking us to do. He's not saying, understand the whole nature of the world. No, he's saying, you. Stop worrying about what's going on in the world. Stop worrying about the politics and the elections and the, and the, the movements of parties and news and so current events. Stop worrying about that for one minute. Isolate from that. And ask yourself a much more important question. Ma'ata? What force moves you? You can look at the greatness of God. You look at how it is that he runs this world and your place in it. Just be careful. Don't get involved in things you shouldn't be involved in. Don't start to play God. Don't start to think because you can think that you know God. His greatness. Be careful. Don't look too deeply into things that come before your world, your life your issues, the things come after it, what is concealed from you. Be careful. Don't play God. So the time of Rosh Hashanah is a time for us to be aware of those things. Why do we have Shofar? That's why Harambam says that we have Shofar. Shofar is an alarm. Says Harambam. I'm not going to read through the entire thing. Chavod, you can read it. Oh, that's what it is. The Roshafar is an alarm. Wake up to the nature of your life. Question the meaning of your life. What have you learned over the last six months in these peculiar conditions about you and what might need healing, what might need addressing, what might need rectifying, what you might need to give yourself in order that you should be able to live as the whole person that HaKadosh Baruch Hu created. That's a very important part of this. A very important part of this. It's not just what do I need to rectify in terms of stopping behavior. It's part of it, yeah. What are the things that you're not doing that are stifling an element of yourself that HaKadosh Baruch Hu created? What has come out? in the quiet of the last half year. And so in that, we come to Rosh Hashanah and we stand before HaKadosh Baruch Hu and we have to answer that question. What I say, what I suggest, this is not just theory and philosophy that I'm sharing with you. Write it down. Prepare for the day. Let the shofar be not just a wake-up call, but the shofar be a starting trumpet to tell you, and now go. Now speak. Now, as God is being crowned before you, they're looking down to listen to you. Now speak. It's now it's time. Don't come in as though, you know, it jumped upon you. Prepare. You have a whole week. Write down what you think has come up for you in these, these last six months. Write down what, not just what's come up, write down what does it mean to you. What insights do you have about it? Write down what you're afraid to look at. It's okay. Don't have to look at everything. Maybe you're not ready to look at everything. Write down the fact that you're not ready to look at everything. Maybe it's next year. Be truthful and honest. Let not the solitude be for no reason for vain. And in that, I think that, you know, when we say COVID Rosh Hashanah, I mean, like, I, I imagine, you know, I know I'm talking to New York over here, so it's not London. London Rosh Hashanah is going to be very, very different than it usually is. The synagogue will not be full. The choir will not be singing. The tefillah will be shortened. I've shortened the tefillah for Rosh Hashanah. 
Yom Kippur for that matter. The usual trappings that we have relied on to stimulate our sense of Rosh Hashanah and what it is that we normally do on Rosh Hashanah, very much of them will not be present for us this year. And I imagine that that will be the case to a larger or smaller extent for all of you. There will be members of your family that I believe, I imagine, will be isolating at home. Rosh Hashanah will be happening for them at home. I will say, incidentally, that I'm sending to my community a guide for tefillot at home on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur with the page numbers from our Mahzor, but I'm happy to share it with anybody who wants just the general ideas around it without the page numbers being, uh, you know, fitting for the Mahzor. I'll, I'll be happy to share that. But in the situation in which Rosh Hashanah is not there in the normal way that it is for us, and given the situation that we're coming from, what we've come from, what is the core of Rosh Hashanah? The core of Rosh Hashanah is this, and with this I will close. We are all crafting a life, all of us. No one is exempt from that. There's not one person here or anywhere that is not doing that. Every single one of us are crafting a life with the days that we live, the actions in which we engage, the choices we make, whether we like it or not. There will be a life that was lived by the end. What do you want it to look like? Rosh Hashanah has always been the time for our people to question that. Where Kadosh Baruch questions it with us. And this year, there's a unique aspect of it that we have spent six years, six, it seems like six years, six months in solitude. What has come up for us? And how will that manifest in your question of what life do I wish to craft for myself? What am I missing and have not paid attention to? What have I put too much attention to and I need to sit back a little? What have I made mistakes with and I need to correct? It's not more complicated than that. It really is relatively simple, but it does take work. It's not enough simply to talk about these things, to know about the nature of the day and the ideas, but to do the work. Write it down. Question. Write it in question-answer form. What have I learned during the last six months of isolation? Answer the question. What things are most important to me now? Are they the same things that are most important to me six months ago? What are the things that I fear now, given the news? Ask yourself these questions and answer the questions. That's the most important work that you could do as a Jewish person celebrating Rosh Hashanah, as a human being, but certainly as a Jewish person celebrating Rosh Hashanah, that's the most important thing you could do this week. Nothing else is more important. So you take the time to be able to do it. It's a suggestion. If you haven't ever done it before, well, it's always a good time to start. We will say at the opening of Rosh Hashanah, at least it is our minhag to say at the opening of Rosh Hashanah, the Achot Ketana. The Achot Ketana always, of course, ends with the line, Tichle Shana Vekililoteha. Tichle Shana Vekililoteha. And then the last stanza ends with, Tahil Shana Ubirchoteha. And so that's my prayer for us and for all of you. May the year and all of its curses and negative aspects be done. And may the new year begin with blessings and berachot. May this year be one of as much as there was setback and distress in this year, may the year coming to us be a year of tremendous successes and strides and growth and blessing. May it be filled with joy and Yeshua and the salvations of HaKadosh Baruch Hu for us, for his people and for the world. That we should have long, healthy, happy lives filled with good and strength. Thank you for your time and thank you for your sharing. And uh, we will have a good and strong year.
Thank you.